Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to heat up some bolts and drop a plate underneath this tender so we can go inside and clean it out. And I'm going to take everybody inside the tender and show everybody what we're going to do today. Alright, so we're currently at the back of the tender. There's a tarp over it to protect the unpainted sandblasted metal. So here's what the inside of the tarp looks like. And you can see there's some metal that looks kind of silvery in color, especially right here. That's what fresh sandblasted metal looks like. It's always best to get all the rust off before you paint something. And when we restore things here at the museum, we try to do like a once and done approach. All right, so we're gonna head down in the tender. In this tender, there's no ladder, but in some other ones there is. So I'm just gonna step down here. And I have a light down here. So this is what the inside of one of our tenders looks like. Up there, there's a slope sheet where the coal goes. So this would have all been water. And you can see over the years just what holding the water has done to this tender. It's pretty rusty, but the kind of the bizarre thing and the surprising thing is if we look at the floor, it's my hand, there's about three quarters of an inch of rusty metal that is delaminated from the sheet below. Now, on the other tenders, the metal was quarter inch thick to start, but it had, over the years, it had lost about one eighth of an inch of thickness, so it lost about half its thickness. Nowadays, and back then, they just replace panels in it, but you can see kind of the rust and deterioration. Now, you might look at some of this metal and go, well, that metal needs replaced, but in, in reality, a lot of it's still pretty thick, which is nice, but you can see like back there, there's a, there's a piece that's pretty well gone. It's, it's disintegrated completely. So now the area in question, if you look here in the middle of this tender, you'll see a square. That is originally where the tenders, the water would have come up from the scoop. There actually would have been a giant piece of cast metal that would have gone up and around here. It looks like a big S. And I'll show everybody what that looks like on an engine inside. But my plan, and I'm not sure if this is going to work, my plan is I'm going to go from the bottom and there's nuts and studs underneath that. And I'm going to try to get it from the outside. You might be asking, well, why aren't you going to do it from the inside? I don't like to do inside work if I don't have to, especially because this is considered a confined space. And what a confined space is, is an area with only one means of entry and one means of exit. So right now, if you look up, here's the gap. This is my only way in and only way out. So I want to be as safe as possible. All right, so this is what the plate looks like from underneath. And my job today is I'm going to heat these bolts and I'm going to try to take them out and drop this plate. I believe this is a cover plate. It looks like there might be some gasket material we're gonna have to deal with. One thing I like to do here at the museum, even though I have a lot of prints for things, a lot of stuff's not documented. So I like to come in and get a game plan and really look at what I'm working with and try to think of the smartest, easiest way to do this. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I like what I'm seeing with the bolts and I'm going to go get the torch and we're going to see how well this goes. I took a good look at these before I went and grabbed the torch. And some of these, if you look super close at, they look rounded. And it looks like they're so rusted that they lost the hex of the nut. So my plan with that, I'm going to try to grab a pipe wrench and grab the ones that need it. So the plan is I'm gonna heat up this nut red hot. When you heat the nuts, you're trying not to heat the bolts. So there's two theories behind that. You're expanding the nut and you're also kind of getting the dirt out. Um, I like to stay away from the stud because if, I'm heat, if I heat the stud up and the nut, then they're just gonna to expand together and it might be a little more difficult. So I like to heat just the nut. We'll get a nice and cherry red. We're gonna use a rosebud and we're gonna to try to back these off and see where we get to. So, I saved you about 25 minutes of me getting ready. I had to swap an oxygen bottle out and I had to prep my area. So, I'm back now. We're getting ready to heat these nuts up. Right up here. 
And I'm going to start with the easiest one I can. So I'm going to pick one of the ones that the nut still looks pretty good. I bought with me inch and an eighth inch and inch and a sixteenth socket. I'm going to try to see if I can get the nut a little bit red and then lightly tap the socket onto it to just give me a little bit of a bite to see if I can get it off. The goal is I'm not going to try to do this with a lot of force. I'm going to try to heat up the nuts enough where they come off nice and easy. Uh, there's a lot of sand and media blast material down here. So I brought myself a little uh, board so I can lay on so I'm not laying in this. I have gloves on. I have my welding jacket on. I have my goggles here. Um, I have all my PPE. I have some earplugs as well. So we're going to start and see how it goes. I have my torch set up to what I want. The one interesting thing that I found is if you look under here, you can see there's wooden decking. So one thing we have to be careful of when we torch cut is that we can't, I don't want to light that on fire. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move that out of the way. And I, I got lucky. All I have to do is grab it from the other side. And I can move it, move it around from there and I can get it out of my way. It's super important when you do this that you check for anything that you can catch on fire. And it, I'm smelling it. It appears that there's a rubber gasket that this sealed with. So we just have to be extra careful when we run it. You can see I already started to heat it a little bit. And I, start, I noticed those two things, so I stopped. An important thing when you do this, two things. One, don't be surprised if this giant piece of metal acts like a sponge and it sucks away all your heat. I was heating that for a little bit and a lot of th a couple things are happening. The rubber underneath is obviously not happy, so that's going to catch on fire. I'm going to see how that goes. That might dictate what I do. I also noticed there's a piece of lumber back here that started to flame up a little bit on me, so that was something I got to keep an eye on as well. This appears to be a giant piece of cast. That's going to soak all my heat away. So I'm going to have to be more careful and I'm going to have to put a little bit more heat on it. I don't even know if this is going to work because the bottoms of these nuts are a little bit beat up. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to make a final decision. I really don't want to cut these off, but sometimes you got to get you get to a point where is it worth me spending 4 hours to get these off? when I can cut them off and just put new bolts in. And it looks like with all the things I'm noticing, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna try on this one. I'm gonna see what my result is, but it looks like I might just end up cutting these off. Um, it's a time, there's a time element in it. And we can fix these bolts, it's no big deal. But we'll try one more time and we'll go from there. One thing that I really enjoy about this job is I get to try new things and I get to do things that I've never done before. So on paper, this looks super easy. Oh, you heat up the nut and you take the nut out and it's going to come off. But as I'm doing this, I'm noticing a couple things. 
Um, I'm this piece of wood behind me is already starting to char. You can see I'm flicking it. I got to put this out first things first. Because remember, this engine, I mean that that wood could be 80 years old. It's it's embering on me, so I'm I'm done with this. I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the torch and I'm just going to torch cut these nuts off because I can't risk me ca a catching the tender on fire. That'd be bad. And B, I'm going to be here for hours while I try it. Could I get a smaller rosebud? Perhaps that might work. But if I do that, this plate is still going to soak that heat away. It's cast. Now, there'll come a point where the plate's going to get so hot, it it the plate will get hot and I'll be able to heat the nut. But I think I'm looking at it from a time element. I'm going to change the head on my torch and I'm going to try cutting these off and we're going to see how it goes. So that's me cutting that off. I'm going to save you the time of watching me cut off the other 20 of them or so. And we'll cut to when they're all off. All right, so one thing, I'm behind the camera right now. One thing that we have to be super careful of so you can see, this plate is just about ready to come off. There's a little bit of resistance at the front. I am not going to be working underneath this or around this. Anytime I use a tool, I'm gonna to come at it from the side and I'm going to, you like gravity, just drop this plate. I don't know how heavy this is, if I were to guess, maybe 50 pounds, but it's above me, so it's going to be harder on my muscles to lift it. So I'm not going to take a chance. I never take chances with this. Even if it takes longer, I'm going to take the five or 10 minutes, go get a different tool, the correct tool for the job, and I'm going to make sure my fingers, hands, feet, and everything is out of the way so I can drop this. But you saw how that came down. We got really, really, really lucky with this, which is great. Um, I'm just going to let it hit the ground. There's a ton of sand on it from the sandblast, so it's not going to get damaged or break. I will help guide it if I can, but I don't think I'm not even going to put my hand down there. So we're just going to let it fall and see what it does.
<laughs> All right, so as you can see, after that slight tripod malfunction, uh, camera's fine, so that's good. This plate is out. This would have been the blocker plate for the uh, water scoop for the tender, if it had one. I'm not entirely sure that this one had one, and I'll show you a couple reasons why I think that when we compare it to another engine out in the yard. Um, basically, the dead giveaway is there's no, I don't see any like old apparatus on this tender. It might have had the option for it, and then based on where this locomotive was, would have dictated um, it maybe if it was more regulated to yard or sh short local runs, it wouldn't have had it. But this is the opening without the blo the uh, blocker plate on. Um, I'll, re I'll replace all these studs when we bring it into the shop for restoration. But uh, now I have a direct access into the tender. You can kind of see some light peeking through. Um, this is really nice because I'm going to start scooping the inside of the tender. And then... Um, I'm going to, the next video, I'm going to show how I'm going to number and remove the uh, braces inside the tender so we can sandblast in here. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. This came out really good. If you're interested in this kind of work, it's going to keep on coming. I love showing people uh, how we restore these and what's involved. You can see just to drop this plate, we're, we're at about three hours. So by the time I got all my stuff, was safely did it. Um... Yeah, so I hope everyone has a great day and thanks for joining me. Have a good night.